ESL um, teachers and population here in Idle State Schools. We also have Vivian um, Simmons, who is also an ESL lead teacher and um, the dual language um, DLI uh, program uh, lead teacher. So, um, and she is out of town this weekend and um, she's also um, a great resource um, to find out more about our program. Um, but what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview today about um, our program here in Iredell State School Schools. Um, we started our um, dual language program back in 2009. We started at um, East Iredell Elementary School. Um, and since then, we've expanded to um, Cottle Creek Elementary School. So we have two elementary schools here, K-5, um, that have the dual language immersion program, um, Spanish, English. And right now we have a total of 19 cultural exchange teachers with five teachers um, that are local um, in this area. We also have um, teacher contracts are basically three years um, that they come here and work with us and they do have the possibility of extending it to five years. So for example, um, well Vivian actually was a dual language teacher and then she transitioned into the ESL uh, teacher world <laughs> and became an ESL teacher and then of course went on to become a lead teacher with us here at um, Central Office. Um, we have the model that we use here in Iredell State School School. So for kindergarten, we start them out. It's a 90-10 model. So we do 90% in Spanish um, and 10% in English, um, which is generally their enhancements. And then for our ELs um, or MLs, um, the ESL program where they're pulled out and served through that. <laughs> Um, now, the curriculum that we use does follow the North Carolina Standard Course of Study and also our Iredell State School School curriculum guides that they use. Um, now, our teachers are part of the Participate program, and they do provide them a pacing guide, but they are free to move throughout the timeline around anything that matches what the kids are learning there at that particular school. So they do have some flexibility with that um, pacing guide. Um, even though Participate does, of course, give them that as a guideline. And the pictures I've included here are some that are from our, some of our classrooms, actually, and some of our teachers here in Iredell State School Schools. So, um, again, let's see, I think, did we flip back? Um, okay, yes. So, again, the kindergarten model is um, it's the 90-10%, so, but first grade through fifth grade, um, we switch over to the 50-50 model. So we have 50% instructions in Spanish and 50% is in English. Um, the students start working on it. Basically what they do is they start working on a topic in Spanish, for example, with a Spanish teacher. And then the next day they continue that same topic or standard, but in English. So they don't repeat what they've already learned in Spanish. They continue that curriculum and move forward, but they're learning it in English. Um, the standards are continuous day in and day out. They're not repeated. So our future plans basically with our I, um, with our sorry, our dual language program um, this year, the professional development that they offer the teachers, um, they attended monthly meetings with our director, Claudia Jimenez um, and Vivian, and they worked through Toma la Palabra um, by Dr. Laura. So they worked through that um, throughout this year, but this coming year, um, the plan is for them to um, have professional development for the English teachers on the 50-50 dual language model, just to kind of deepen their understanding of that to make sure that they are using that continuous model um, with the curriculum. Um, also, they're wanting to dive a little bit deeper into the guiding principles um, for dual language as well um, in this next year. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea, like, my daughter, these pictures are actually Isabella <laughs> that you can see with some of her teachers that she had throughout the year. She started in kindergarten um, in the dual language program and she finished the, through fifth grade. And then, of course, she's at an IB school now, um, middle school, and she has continued to study Spanish in the middle school. Um, and in our district for the dual language program and those students who go on to middle school, especially with the IB program, um, they do have an accelerated track for them, those who've been in the DI program, um, for advanced Spanish once they get to the middle school, uh, which is kind of nice. And then they, once they get to the high school, um, you know, then they continue that on a much higher level. So, um, but the one thing that I would suggest as a parent is just, again, making sure they get started in kindergarten um, from the get-go because um, we have had students that come in in like first grade, but generally that's not 
so common. Um, another tip there is to work with your child. Um, you know, because the thing is I found with, with my daughter, this is just from a parent perspective, um, working with her, um, just make sure if you do have a, a DLI program in your system, if you can express to your parents of the English speakers, um, to make sure that they have those foundations in place when they start kindergarten for English. Because of course, like with our model, it's a 90-10 model. So they're taught in Spanish, you know, the majority of the day. And they're taught to read in Spanish first before then in first grade, they start working on those foundational skills in English as well. So um, for her, I mean, again, it depends on the child. Um, for my daughter and the way she learns, her learning style, um, in retrospect, I realized that it would have been more helpful for me to go back and work with her a little more um, on her reading foundation skills before starting in the DI program. Um, the other thing is to stay connected to both teachers, not just the English. Don't be intimidated <laughs> um, by, you know, the Spanish teachers. Um, and, you know, you can learn Spanish along with your child, which was, is something that's really neat about this program. Um, but it's really, really important, I feel like, to stay connected to both teachers um, as the child goes through this program. Um, and then from an ESL teacher's view, um, I actually taught at East Elementary School as an ESL teacher um, when this program started. And um, it was really neat to, to see um, how it evolved. I, we started out with one grade level and then they moved on to two grade levels, three grade levels uh, until they got up to fifth grade. So it was kind of a gradual process implementing our program in the district. Um, but what we did for the ESL program with our testing, our screening of ELs, is we um, created cut scores. And with those cut scores, the way that we base that is with the WAPT, if a student, so if, for example, in their first semester of kindergarten, if they scored a total of 15 or above in the listening and um, speaking on the WAPT, um, then they were served on a transition level. So they were, they were still served, but they didn't actually come to the pullout classes on a regular basis, okay, because they scored high enough where we felt like it was more important for them to be in the classroom consistently um, than pulling them out. However, they were served in that sense that they were on transition. We monitored their progress, and of course, they were tested each year. Um, then for your first graders, first graders, first semester, of course, they were um, screened with the WAPT. And again, here, if they scored 15 or above in reading and writing, um, and also 15 or above on their listening and speaking, then they, of course, were also placed on transition. They were still served um, and monitored they didn't necessarily get pulled out of the classroom. So if they fell below that, of course, we did pull them out for services based off the level that they scored. Um, again, this is kind of, these are parameters that we use, but the ESL teacher and the classroom teacher, of course, collaborated because sometimes scores don't necessarily tell you what you need to know. So um, based off that collaboration, they would sometimes still determine, hey, this student still needs a little extra support in the English language. Um, and so we would still, of course, serve them through the pullout program, um, which is really, really important. The other thing um, that we've kind of found with challenges is the scheduling, because at the elementary level, of course, we didn't want to pull them out during their core subjects, like with um, math or with reading. Um, and so generally they would be pulled out during their social studies or science time because in the EL classroom, um, that's some of the topics that we generally cover anyway. So it was, it was great because they still got those topics or those standards through the EL services, but we always made sure that we avoided any math or reading core time. Um, we also would avoid enhancement time so they don't miss those. Um, obviously lunch, and then of course recess. So that was probably, or that still is, probably the biggest challenge we have is scheduling when it comes to pulling out those um, BLI students to make sure that they get what they need, the support they need, um, but also not interfere with their learning in the regular classroom. And that's just kind of a quick, <laughs> kind of a quick wrap up there of what our program looks like. And so I wanted to open it up for any questions that you might have. Um...